morning, boys and girls. My name is Johnny, and I am your host today. Mr. Zorik asked me to cover for him, and I am so excited to be here. Kids Connection is a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new program. And if this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, I'm going to invite you to sing our song of the day with us. And our song of the day is, God is for me. Let's sing it together. And I'm going to call my friend Paul to sing it with us. for singing a song with me, Paul. You're welcome. I love singing this song here at Kids Connection. Yes, yes, me too. Now, Paul, and boys and girls, I'm going to invite you to please bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this Kids Connection program. We invite you to be with us today. Be with all the boys and girls, moms, dads, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, we ask that you keep everyone safe at home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Paul. Yes, Johnny. Do you know what a dormitory is? Dormy what? Dormitory. No, I don't know. Boys and girls, do you know what a dormitory is? Well, a dormitory is a place where kids sleep in a school or a facility. So our mission story today, it comes from a girl. It's a story about a girl named Anchao and she lives in a dormitory in school. She is learning a lot more than just her school work. Let's watch our missionary story today.
when Anshal was eight. She left her small village and arrived at Varanasi Seventh-day Adventist School. She had no friends, she didn't respect the teachers, and she knew nothing about Jesus. Anshal moved into the dormitory and quickly began making friends. The dorm is a social place where students play games, relax, and do schoolwork. Many of the students spend time reading their Bibles. This was a totally different world to Anshel's previous life in the village, but she found herself enjoying Bible studies and trying to get good grades. Eventually, Anshel gave her heart to Jesus and is so grateful for her experience at the school. Really, God has blessed me so much that I learned so many stories and so many um, activities in this church, and I like them so much. And I, my favorite story is um, Job. Like Anshel, many students come to this school knowing nothing about Jesus, but their lives are transformed. They are immersed in a holistic learning experience. In addition to the standard subjects, Students learn about health, engage in fun activities, and enjoy delicious meals. Each Sabbath, students attend the Adventist House of Prayer, located right on campus. They often participate in the Sabbath program. Anshel and her friends love to sing for the congregation. We are having these children from the village area and they are learning Jesus and they know that this is all blessing coming in the name of Jesus to them and to their families. So that's how the message of love and Jesus is going to the rural area from this small school. God has blessed this school with more and more students each year, but unfortunately the dormitories are over full. The girls are crammed into a small space with bunk beds piled up against each other. This quarter, a portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will help expand the girls' dormitory, allowing more girls to attend school. Present, we have only one room and we have 25 girls here. But then when the dorms are there, we will have around 60 girls in the dormitories. We will have just the double or triple of the girls studying in this. In this way, we'll be educating more students in our school. Please pray for Varanasi Seventh-day Adventist School. Pray that the teachers and students can continue to be a positive light for each other, like they were to Anshel. Please consider what you can do to help the girls at this school. Thank you for supporting projects such as this. Thank you for supporting Mission Offering. Well, Johnny, I didn't know that kids sleep in this school. Yes, yes, Paul. Kids sleep there and they learn about Jesus. But we can help them with our offerings. So boys and girls, don't forget to ask mom and dad to click on the donation just above and donate to the missionaries. You can also donate to our program Kids Connection. I will do that, Johnny. Yes. Me too, Paul. Oh. Where is Mr. Zorik? Oh, he couldn't be here today, so he asked me to cover. And I am so happy to be here today. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> yes, yes, so excited. You know, Johnny, I'm excited too. Well, thanks for joining me, Paul. By the way, how was your week? My week was fun. You know, I heard a story from a friend of mine at school. His name is Peter. Oh, yes, yes. I know Peter. Yeah, you know what Peter said? What? Peter said that he went camping. Whoa, I love camping. What did he do? Well, he went camping and he climbed the tree. And he said that the tree was so high, he could almost touch the sky. Wow, oh, that is a tall tree. Yeah, yeah, but that wasn't all. Really? He said that he jumped from the top of the tree and he jumped inside of the lake and he didn't get hurt. 
Wow! That is fun! Yeah, but I'm not sure if he's saying the truth. It's probably true! You know, that adventure is nothing compared to what happened with me! Really? Yes, really! So, let me tell you my story! And you're gonna tell me if this is exciting! Mm, okay, what happened to you, Johnny? Well, Paul, see, I went to the zoo! You know, LA Zoo! Have you kids gone to LA Zoo? Have you gone to LA Zoo, Paul? Yes, I've been there. Well, me too! But, here is where my adventure starts! Mmm, tell me. Well, after seeing all the animals, I saw the giraffe, the chimps, the monkeys, the gorillas, I saw the tiger! What, Johnny? I got to the lion cage! Oh, yes, I know where the lion cage is. Yes, but let me tell you what happened. When I got there, I saw people running, running and screaming for their lives, and they were all running. Ah, 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 and I rushed to see what was going on. Do you know what happened? No, I don't know. Tell me, Johnny. The lion got out of his exhibit! What? Yes! Yes, Paul! The lion got out and the lion was chasing everyone! But do you know what, Paul? I was there and I was able to chase the lion and the lion was, was running from me and the lion was running from one side to the other and I was chasing the lion like a lion hunter and I was chasing and jumping over rocks and I was jumping over people and I say, lion, I'm gonna get you and I'm gonna put you back on your cage and the lion saw me coming and he ran and he ran and he ran and I continued to run and I was almost and the lion was almost out of the zoo and when I finally jumped and I caught the lion by the neck whoa Johnny yes 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 I caught the lion by the neck hmm Johnny Yes, wait, 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 but that's not all. That's just the beginning of the adventure. When I caught him by the neck, I dragged him all the way inside where his exhibit was. I put him in there and I closed the door. Whoa, Johnny. Wait, wait, wait. After that, everybody was asking for my autograph because I was the Lion Hunter! Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> Johnny? Yes, Bo? You know, I think Peter's story was kind of a lie. Really? Yes, and you know, Johnny. What, Paul? Jesus doesn't like when we lie. Well, but, but, you know, my adventure was fun because I was a lion hunter! Johnny? Yes, Paul? Are you sure your story is what really happened? Well, uh, kind of. Boys and girls, do you think that was what really happened with Johnny? Johnny? 
Jesus doesn't like when we lie. Well, Paul, you know, maybe I exaggerated a little bit. A little bit, Bonnie? Okay, okay, maybe a... a Johnny? Yes? Why don't you tell the boys and girls what really happened? But, you know, I was the lion hunter! Johnny! Okay, okay, I'll, I'll tell the truth. You know, I got to the LA Zoo. And I got really close to the lion cage. And the lion roared so loud, so loud. And I was scared. I was scared and I was crying. I didn't want anybody to see me crying. But. Johnny, why did you say that you were the lion hunter? Because it was fun! I thought that you would like me more because the story was excited! I saw how happy you were with the story of Peter! And I wanted my story to be excited too! Wow! Johnny, you know, just because other people are telling lies, it doesn't mean that we have to lie too. Jesus wants us to have integrity. Integrity is when we stand by the truth. So, it doesn't mean that you like Peter more than me? No, Johnny. I like you because you're my friend, not because you tell lies or because you have adventures. You know, boys and girls, in the Bible today, in the story, we are going to learn of a man in the Bible who had integrity. Oh yes, yes, I heard Mr. Zorik say that today we're going to learn about Noah, and Noah was a man of integrity. That's right, Johnny. Noah was a man of integrity. And despite that all the people around him were doing bad things, he was a man of integrity. And he did the right thing, even though the ones around him didn't. Oh, that's why we are singing the song, God is for me, because even though all the people around us in this world are doing wrong things, we can always count on God to be right next to us. That's right, Johnny. How about we sing the song again, God is for me. Boys and girls, let's sing the song, God is for me again. Okay, okay, let's sing the song now.
My name is Johnny and I loved being your host today. I also want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for watching and being a part of our program. Oh, by the way, Mr. Sorry forgot to say last week, but last week we had two birthdays. Yes, it was Natalie's birthday. So Natalie, happy birthday. It was also Ellis, happy birthday, Ellis. I love you and we all here, we all love you here from Kids Connection. Parents, this afternoon it's Parents Connection on Zoom, so don't forget to log in. Oh, by the way, one more thing. Today we have our early teens classroom. Yes, early teens. And teacher James is going to be teaching the classroom this afternoon or right now for Kids Connection. So if you have a teenager brother or sister, Tell them to look for the Teens for Christ and join the classroom today. Thank you so much, Mr. James, or, uh, <coughs> well, Mr. Hearn. He also, he goes by James. I love his classroom, so join us. And kids, I am so excited to tell you something new. Well, the teachers from Kids Connection are talking, and we are going to have our first Kids Connection live on Zoom! Yes! So put it on your calendar and join us. Zoom live at 9 o'clock for Kids Connection. Thank you so much for joining us. Stick around to watch your teacher's classroom right now. Until next week, my name is Johnny and the crowd goes wild. <sighs> goodbye kids, goodbye! See you around. Bye bye. Thank you for joining. Bye 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 bye. Just kidding. This lion is our friend. He is our friend here, at Kids Connection. Good lion! Rawr. Good morning and happy Sabbath. 
Welcome early teens to your Sabbath school lesson and thank you for joining me today. My name is Mr. Hearn, but you can call me James. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you today for bringing us here on this Sabbath day. And we ask Lord that the Holy Spirit will fill our hearts as we learn more about your love and grace. Amen. Now, for these next couple of weeks, we're going, to we're going to talk about practicing integrity. And today's topic is about Noah, the blameless man who needed grace. Integrity models faithfulness to God despite opposition. Noah is a remarkable example of a covenant partner with God who stood faithful in the midst of a wicked culture. How bad was it? Genesis 6 verse 5 describes Noah's generation before the flood. Human wickedness was great and so deeply ingrained within hearts and minds that people's every thought and scheme was only evil. And that was true all the time. Verses 11 and 12 of Genesis chapter 6 adds that violence filled the world due to human corruption. Yet, in the vortex of its vileness, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Genesis 6, verse 8. According to Hebrews 11, verse 7, the stark contrast of his godly life with the evil generation around him was itself a clear indictment of human sin. Integrity is always woven into a relationship with God. Noah walked with God as a person of faith, righteousness, and obedience. Genesis 6 verse 9. As Hebrews 11 7 tells us, he trusted God and Noah's faith in God produced a righteous life. The Bible often uses the idea of walking as a figure of speech for living. Our walk is our lifestyle, according to the Bible. To walk a certain way is to live that way. Here are some New Testament examples taken from the disciple John in the books that he wrote in the Bible. Walking in the light, John chapter, chapter 12, verse 35, and 1 John 1, verse 7. Walking in the dark, 1 John 1, verse 6, and chapter 2, verse 11, walking in truth. 2 John, verse 4, and 3 John, verses 3 to 4. Now here are some examples from the Apostle Paul. Walking in new life, Romans 6, verse 4. Walking in the Spirit, Romans 8, verse 4, and Galatians 5, verse 16. Walking in Christ, Colossians 2, verse 6. Walking properly before the lost, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 12. The fact that Noah was blameless, was blameless conveys, conveys the result of his integrity. Remember that integrity is wholeness or completeness, which is precisely what the Hebrew word for blameless means. Noah's righteousness prompted him to obey God. He did what God told him. Importantly, Noah had a healthy fear and reverence for God. The sacrifices he offered after the flood proved how committed Noah was to the Lord. All of the Old Testament sacrifices point to the greatest sacrifice that God gave us, and that was his son, Jesus. Jesus the Messiah, would die in our place so we might enjoy a covenant relationship with him today. Though we sin, as did Noah, God forgives us through Christ. And last but not least, integrity can exist even where sinlessness does not. Noah enjoyed the blessings of God even though he was not without sin. 
because we live in a, we've always lived in a world of sin ever since the fall of man. Despite God's curse, bringing thorns and thistles to inhibit the land's productivity, taken from Genesis 3 verse 17, God still graciously allows people to benefit from the ground's produce. In Genesis 9 verse 20, Noah cultivated a vineyard and received a blessing from its fruit. Yet it appears he abused that blessing, indulging to the point of drunkenness and unfortunately nakedness. His son, Ham, responded to his father's indiscipline with disrespect, while Shem and Japheth modeled integrity in their reaction to Noah's indiscretion, Genesis 9, verses 20 through 23. Still, God displayed his glory through both his curse on Ham, through Canaan, and his blessing upon Shem and Japheth. Genesis 9, verses 26 through 27. Noah stands as a recipient of God's steadfast love, taken from Isaiah 54, verses 9 through 10. A model of right living, Ezekiel 14, verses 14 and 20. And lastly, a messenger of holiness, 2 Peter 2, verse 5. Now, we're going to apply what we learned in the lesson. Lay claim to the gospel's life-changing power, both in our hearts and in our works. Let me ask you this. How does your testimony affect your perspective, attitude, and actions? Well, I have some good news for you. First of all, it is important to understand your testimony for it to affect your life. Your Christian testimony includes how your relationship with Christ has made an impact in your life. It can greatly affect your interaction with others. Your perspective is brighter when you remember how God transformed you and that he continues to work in and through you. Your actions and behavior are more intentional when you realize God's plan for all people and especially you. Keep these truths in the forefront of your mind. Our testimonies are encouraging and motivating. Let me ask you the second question. How can I, you or all of us, how can we be hopeful and live a life that positively stands out? With so much going on in the world right now, we need, we need some positivity somewhere, am I right? Well, here's something to leave you with. An optimistic outlook begins with hope in Christ's promises for now and eternity. The Lord has promised never to leave us or forsake us. Hebrews 13 verse 5. With the Holy Spirit living in us, we have power, strength, and guidance that can cause us to stand out. We should strive to imitate Christ's life. People will certainly take notice when they are treated with love and compassion especially when they do not seem to deserve it. When we focus on the mission God has for us to lead others to him, our lives will make an impact. Now, since we have completed our lesson, we're going to put the truths that you've learned into practice. And how are we going to do that? With this, you're going to respond with your testimony. That's right. A personal testimony is the story of a person's life that highlights the way Christ has made an impact. Each of our individual testimonies is important for us to treasure and to use to share the gospel 
with others. People may be hesitant to hear about the Bible, but they are usually willing to hear a personal story. Utilize your testimony to reach, to, to reach others for Christ. I can tell you a time when I had to share a personal testimony when I was a student at Andrews University, but it helped me to realize how much God has done for me and how, and how my actions were able to bless others and help them in their walk with Christ. Now, in this video, there will be a link. There will be a link for you to click on, and that is the handout that I'm giving to you. Now, in this handout, you will have to write out your testimony. And remember, to think, to really think hard about your testimony with God. Because, because in the end, you're going to share this with me and all your friends next week. To make, make sure to follow all the directions. All right? And with that, we have concluded our lesson for today. Let's end with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for helping us to learn more about Noah and about, and about how much grace he was given from you. Lord, we ask now that as the students begin to write out their personal testimonies, that you will help them, that you will motivate them to write out how they truly feel about you. And most importantly, may their personal testimonies be able to go out into the world for others to hear. And when others hear it, may it be a blessing for them to reach out to you. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this week. And I'll see you next week as we continue with our unit practicing integrity. Happy Sabbath.